Welcome to my vlog on big data and cybersecurity. My name is Lip Yang Lim, and I'm a computer scientist, an educator, and a software engineer. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to convert Zeek HTTP logs to OCSF format. You might have heard of the OCSF format. It stands for Open Cybersecurity um, Schema Framework. And it's the latest effort by the cybersecurity community in coming up with a common data model um, for all security data. While I'm cautiously optimistic, I'm still pretty excited about uh, this effort um, because there's a bunch of uh, big name vendors that's backing it. And I'm really hoping that these vendors will start letting customers export uh, their logs in OCSF. This would save us a whole lot of trouble to try and ingest and convert those logs into uh, a schema that um, a common schema that we would use. Uh, if it's already done already, that's fantastic. Saves us a lot of normalization work as well. So today I'm going to show you how to do this with Databricks and SQL. Uh, and let's dive right in. So I'm going to show you quickly how I what data I loaded. So I loaded the Zeek data that I used the Zeek command and uh, to pass some PCAPs from the MAC CDC. Um, PCAP data set, and I just get Zeek to export it into JSON format. So in this notebook, I'm just downloading that JS those JSONs and then loading it into Databricks using fairly standard Spark commands. And you see how easy it is to actually load, uh, load those um, data sets in. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just taking the JSON and just letting Spark do its normal um, uh, schema magic and just taking a JSON and taking all the top level fields and making them columns. And this is the, some statistics of the data, um, 78K rows for HTTP um, and so on. Let's go into the notebook that I use to actually develop uh, the queries that's used for uh, the schema mapping. So scrolling down here, um, Let's dive into the query first, and we can talk about schema on write versus schema on read, right? So start with this simple query just to look at the shape of the data. Again, fairly standard Zeek schema. And this is the query that I really start to use to kind of build things out. I would actually go to the Open Cybersecurity Schema Frameworks website. This is the schema reader uh, or browser. And I will look at, in this case, HTTP, HTTP activity is the one I want. And I will look at um, the fields that they specify. And in this case, I'm just going to do the required fields, right? Just for this video. So I'm looking at the required fields. Okay, activity ID, these are the values, category UID, these are the values. Um, and those are fairly, those are kind of constant standard ones right, that we actually that we just hard code in. Um, and then it seems that the interesting one is probably DST endpoint. This is where I actually need to look at. Uh, it's, a, it's a nested object. I could look at the, the network endpoint and look again at the recommended fields. This is the IP and the port. Those are the ones that I'm going to pull out from, uh, from the data. And so that's what I would do. I would actually go look at that and start encoding uh, the mapping, right? So activity ID is 99, category ID is 4. Um, and then the nested objects, destination endpoint is the first one. And I use a name struct function to construct a, uh, a dictionary, if you will, of host name, IP, and port. And I grab those from the source data, right? Which is from the host field, the id.resp page field, the id.resp p field. And I do the same, and I'll and I'll test this as I go. I'll I'll write one of these, and then I will execute this query. I'm just going to execute it for fun, um, and then it would actually um, uh, it would actually then kind of show me uh, show me the query, and uh, it looks pretty reasonable. And I'll just keep iterating on this until I get to uh, all the fields that I want to map. And if again, I will check on um, the output. And if everything looks right, then this is the mapping. So you can see we can use SQL to uh, encode the schema mapping. And you have at your disposal the rich set of SQL built-in functions in Databricks to let you encode this mapping. And so there's, I think there's very few uh, schema com complex schemas that you can't encode. 
uh, with the rich SQL functions, I would say you can almost pretty much encode everything. Once you have this query, now we have two options. We either do schema on write, which I think most people will want to do that. Um, and what we do then is that we take this query, convert it into a DLT job, and then run DLT uh, to actually uh, ingest the data and, uh, and actually apply this transformation to get it into OCSF format. So how do we do that? Take this query. I already have a notebook. Create a SQL notebook. Slap on create streaming live table. HTTP activity name is the name I'm giving the the silver table for this for this data uh, data source. Slap this query here. Um, put in the stream um, on it, and then that's pretty much it. Once you have this, you would then actually create a uh, a job, a Delta Live Table job under workflows. And I've already done this here. Um, and I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. Just do create pipeline and, and fill out the form. I've done this in a previous episode. Um, so I've create, done this and created and ran it, and everything ran fine. And then you can set this on a schedule so that you will run this, say, every, every uh, one hour, every half an hour. And it would go and grab the latest data that, was, that has been uploaded. Um, and it would then apply this mapping and transform it into the OCSF format. So it's a con it can be made to run in a continuous fashion as well. So that's for schema on write. Uh, what about schema on read? Schema on read means you don't want to actually materialize the OCSF data, the data in OCSF format. What you can do is you can create a view, take that same query, slap on create view if not exists, I'm just going to use the V prefix for my uh, view names. And exactly the same query, no changes needed. And that's it. Uh, once you have the view created, you can query the view um, as, if, uh, as if the data has been encoded in OCSF format. So this is the query using uh, OCSF fields, um, a filter on destination endpoint IP, HTTP response code, HTTP request, HTTP method get and i run this on the view i would get back the data uh, of course it does mean that the transformation runs at query time it will add a bit of latency to your queries uh, of course if you did this schema on write you can run the same query on http activity which is the materialized table and you will also get back the same results and that's pretty much it and this is how simple it is to actually a convert data into OCSF format. Um, and I would definitely recommend using uh, this SQL uh, way of encoding schema mappings. It is very compact, very convenient. Of course, if you're a computer scientist, you might want to abstract this out and have a YAML layer on top of this that compiles down to this. By all means, you can do that. Um, for this demo, I'm keeping it very simple. And I like things simple in general. It's, it's operationally easier to maintain. And so that's it. In the next episode, I'm going to address the very hard question on whether to do a common data model or not. So see you next time.